Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. The timeline in Anime Studio allows us to create motion and sequence our layers in our project files. The timeline is composed of two different areas, the channels and the sequencer. The channels allows us to lay down keyframes and create motions with our layers and objects. So what is a keyframe? Well, a keyframe is essentially a change on the timeline. So if at any point in the timeline, you move an object, you use the bone layer, you use the camera movements, anything, you'll be creating a keyframe because you're essentially making a change. In order to demonstrate this, I have selected one of my characters on the project file. And now, I will advance forward on the timeline to about frame 48. To do this, I'll simply click on frame 48. You'll notice a red line now goes through frame 48. That is my scrubber, indicating I am on frame 48. You can also choose the frame by coming up here to this frame area and entering in a numeric value. Now that I am on this frame, I'm going to take the Manipulate Bones tool and move my bones. So I'll grab that tool and come in here and simply move some bones around. You'll notice as I do this, I have created a keyframe or a dot on the timeline. And that is because I have made a change. There is now a keyframe on frame 0 and 48. Notice what happens when I put my cursor in between. If I take the cursor, hold on to the scrubber with my left mouse button, you can see that a motion has taken place between these two keyframes. And that is the advantage of creating keyframes in Anime Studio. The other thing with keyframes is that you can move them around. So let's say I want this motion to happen quicker. Well, I can take the frame at 48 and move it by holding down my left mouse button and dragging back to frame 24. So now you can see that the motion is quicker. Also, if at any time I no longer want this keyframe, I can just click on it and it will highlight in red and hit the delete key. Just be careful when you do this because all of your motions will be deleted. Now, as you can see, I made a change to the timeline with my bone layer. But what would happen if I moved the character around or if I decided to use the camera? Well, if I go back to frame 24 here where this keyframe currently is and I use my transform layer tool and move my character over, you can see that there's only still one keyframe. While this is nice and it consolidates your view of the timeline, it can be difficult to determine where your keyframes are. This, however, is the default view in debut, the consolidation of the timeline. If you want to view your timeline in a more expanded way, simply go up to Edit, Preferences. From here, deselect the Consolidate Timeline Channels button and click OK. Now you'll see on my timeline, I have the bones and the transform layer tool displayed on my timeline as separate keyframes. So now let's say I want to keep the transform layer tool keyframe but delete the bone keyframes. I can do so right now and still keep that transform layer keyframe intact. So once you get familiar with the timeline, you may want to use the expanded view mode just so you get more out of your experience when animating in Anime Studio. Now, one thing to point out is that each layer contains a different view of the timeline. For instance, if I click on another layer here, you'll notice that all those keyframes are now gone. That is because each layer essentially has its own timeline. But just because the keyframes are not there doesn't mean that the character is not animating because if I scrub back, you'll see that she is definitely still animating. 
So now let's look at the sequencer. So I'll click on sequencer. You'll notice now we can see all of the layers we currently have in our layers panel. What this view does for us is it allows us to sequence or move sequences forward or back in our timeline. For instance, with this character I just animated, I started at frame one and went to 24. But let's say I want her to start animating at about frame 30. Well, I can move my keyframes around and try to mess with that, or I can come down here to her layer on the sequencer and just click and hold down my left mouse button and drag forward to frame 30. Now, if we scrub back and forth between 0 and 29, you can see she's stationary. But once frame 30 hits, she starts to animate. The other advantage comes when you want to, let's say, for instance, sequence audio files. Let's say you have an event that occurs and you want to have a sound hit right when it happens. Or let's say you're trying to sync an audio file to a mouth. Well, as you can see, I have an audio file right down here and you can move these audio files in sequence as well. Now going back here to our channels, I want to point a couple more things out. At the top of your timeline, you have buttons. So if we hit the play button, you can see that your timeline will play out. There's also a step backwards button, which will go back one frame. You can also go forward one frame. You can rewind all the way back to the beginning or you can go all the way to the end of your frames. Or you can go back to, to the recent keyframe or go forward to the next keyframe. So those are some tools for you to play with there. You can also adjust which frame you are on at any given time with this field, which I already showed you before. Or you can set up just how long your animation can play out. Although you have a 3000 frame limit, if your animation goes longer than 240, you're going to want to extend this out so that your animation and your timeline will play out to be that long. And that way, when you go to export your movie, you will export out all 500 frames if that's how long your animation tends to be. And that basically covers the timeline in Anime Studio Debut. If you have any more questions regarding Anime Studio, please check out the official Anime Studio website at anime dot smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching. I have more Anime Studio 9 tutorials out there, so please check those out, and I'll see you next time.